个吗？去我刚刚贴的那个新的链接哦。好来，你们有看到老师的吗？我刚刚贴的那个新的链接，刚贴了一个新的，因为你们刚Hi, hi, Shelly. Hi, Benica. And uh, Benica's father, right? Oh. Yes. Hi, Dr. We're going to start. Alright, good afternoon, everyone. May I have your attention, please? Okay. Okay, before we start our lesson, let me introduce our presenter, Benica. Benica was Granted with the Jane Goodall Scholarship and the Studies in Sustainable Development in Changlong Christian University. After coming to Taiwan, she has always been concerned and devoted to the issue of period poverty. In addition to delivering countless speeches across Taiwan, she promotes activities such as sanitary pets donation and she makes every effort to raise public awareness about the menstruation issue. And in July this year, Benica returned to Tanzania, reaching out to local girls and held a, menstru held a menstrual education. And today we are so lucky to have Benica here and learn about what she has done and what her plan is about the issue. Together with her father, introducing the culture of Tanzania to us, so today you will, uh, we, we will have two teachers. We will have two teachers, Benica and Benica's father, okay? And all of you should be attentive for you are required to give feedback and write down what you have learned from this lecture. And today's lesson will last one hour and the next week we will have another on the same issue. Is that clear, everyone? Okay, okay, then let's welcome our presenters. All right, thank you so much. I will go ahead to present it. You're welcome. Let me share the PPT here. Uh, can everybody see my PowerPoint, right? Is it seen? Okay, then I will welcome Mr. Everest Nziku to start the presentation from here. So welcome. Can you see my PowerPoint? Hello? Hello. 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 Can we can hear you? Hello. 
Yes. Can I start over? Yes, please. Hello. Can I yes, start please, over? Yes, you can start. Can you hear me? Yeah, I said my name is uh, Everest. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, my name is Everest Nsiku. I'm in Tanzania. And Tanzania is one of the countries in East Africa. Yeah, it is bordered by Kenya in the north, Uganda, and the Kurundi. And then in the south, it's bordered by, by Zambia and the Malawi, and the Mozambique. In the east, it borders with the uh, Indian Ocean. Yeah. Yeah, I am a teacher by profession. I've been a teacher in the school called the Highlands Secondary School. The school started operating in 1961. It is located in Iringa town, in Iringa municipality, southern of Tanzania. And it is owned by a group of people. It's one of the best private schools in Iringa. It gives uh, categories of operation we have kindergarten, we have primary, primary level, primary school, we have ordinary level, advanced level, and also it offers service for those who are receiving exams of Form 4 and Form 6 and the other levels. It's a beautiful school. It provides a quality education. Um, Tanzania is famous in so many things. One of the things that are very attractive in Tanzania is the island of Zanzibar. Zanzibar is an island uh, uh, located in the Indian Ocean. It is also smaller islands like Yumbuja Pemba. And uh, we have Kilimanjaro is the highest. Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa and one of the highest mountains in the world. Also, we have wildlife. We have uh, uh, many, 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 many national parks. We have Rua National Park. We have uh, Serengeti National Park. We have uh, Mikumi National Park and the others. Also, we have Kiswahili, the language is the culture of our country. And the capital city of Tanzania is Dodoma, and the population of Tanzania is the 63 million people. Uh, I said the Dodoma is the capital city, but formerly it was Dar es Salaam. Now Dar es Salaam is just the economic watch. And we have recreation here, and the most popular sport in Tanzania uh, soccer and the boxing. We have others like uh, volleyball, netball, we have athletics also, and the boxing we have. So Tanzania has also produced several world class runners like Kipchoge and Keino. So for entertainment, also Tanzania enjoys music, dancing, and uh, storytelling, socializing on, at the coffee houses and uh, visiting friends and relatives, uh, important social customs. Uh, we have with Mr. Julius Kamparaga Nyelele, who was our first president of Tanzania. Uh, and the Tanzania also lives in the families. They enjoy being in the families. We have very many tribes in Tanzania. Uh, I... Earlier, I said that we have Zanzibar, the big island. It was formerly uh, a country alone, but in, in 1964, Zanzibar and the Tanganyika united together to form the name of Tanzania. And now, Tanzania is the final active slave market in the world. Uh, and it was, it was located in the heart of the stony, stony town, Zanzibar is currently a significant historical site. Uh, the Zanzibar Island is an awesome world classic beach destination. Very many people like to come and enjoy the beach around here. 
Uh, so it's very attractive. It's very attractive. Very, and uh, if, uh, we have also, I have said, I have said the classic mix, the trade foods and the spices in the Islamic religion in that in that island. So the biggest or the greatest religion there in that island is Islamic religion. Christians are very few. And they are having a plantation as a close. Close is one of the spices, very, very expensive in Tanzania and the other places also. It's the place of tourism also. That is Zanzibar. Um, uh, we have Kilimanjaro, as I've said already, Kilimanjaro is one of the highest mountains in the world one of the highest mountains in the world. It, has, uh, it is 5,895 meters high. Uh, there around the mount, there is also a national park. You can see there giraffes around there and the other countries. And it is very close to Kenya, to the country of Kenya in the north. So also I've, I've already said, and I repeat say, one of the world's best wildlife is available in Tanzania. And the biggest animal available in the national parks is the elephant. A very unique mix of wildlife, the best safari country in the world. National parks and the game reserves cover almost 35% of the country, including Africa's most famous park, Serengeti. People from all over the world come to visit Tanzania because of wildlife. Now, I can mention this, the names of these national parks. One of them is the Kitulo National Park. The second is the Mount Kilimanjaro National Park. The other is the Rua National Park. This Rua National Park is available in Iringa, where I am, and where the School for, of Highlands Secondary School is is there. We have Sadan National Park, we have Udizungwa National Park also is in Iringa, we have Mikomi National Park, we have Katavi National Park, and we have Silos National Park and the Serengeti National Park. Yeah, animals move from one place to the other. These animals that are available in uh, in the national parks do move from Tanzania to, to Kenya. That's what we call it trans-destination migration of the blue white beast from Tanzania to Kenya. Uh, in these national parks, we have what we call the big five. Well, the big five is that they are animals which are very big and only available in tanzania some of them only are available in tanzania we have the african lion we have the african leopard we have the african elephant we have the cape buffalo we have the rhinoceros a big five and uh, the biggest catcher in tanzania is swahili catcher swahili catcher or okay, swahili catcher so tanzania has more languages than the any other African, African countries, it has over 100 languages. And however, the national language of Tanzania or national languages of Tanzania are English and Kiswahili. So Tanzania is the home of home to over 100 tribes who each have their own tribal language or ethnic language. We have Maasai, those people, Maasai, they, they, they have a very different attire. As you can, say, you can see them in the picture, these people are handers. And the women are making so very many beautiful uh, things to be worn around the neck or in the wrist or on the wrist. And uh, these Maasai people can hunt animals. They can even kill. One Maasai can kill an animal, any, a big animal like uh, an elephant or a, a lion. They are very skillful in hunting and in killing animals. It is said that one Maasai 
when he wants to marry a woman, he can be requested to bring a head of, of a liar. Uh, so you, you, you need to be very powerful to kill a liar. Otherwise, a liar can kill even 100 people within five minutes. And uh, let's now practice greeting in Swahili. Kiswahili is the, is the biggest language, also it's a major language, the communication language of Tanzania. You know, our first president, uh, Julius Kambaraga Nyelele, he ordered all people in Tanzania to speak Kiswahili. Uh, he wanted Kiswahili to be the national language. Now, if someone is, wants to say, how are you? He can say, mambo and you answer poor. Uh, again, if someone can say, habari yako, you answer nzuri sana. Nzuri sana. And uh, someone can say, asante, you can say, asante, then you say, karibu sana. Karibu sana. Then, ka, habari gani? Eh? Now, nzuri tena, sana. mambo, then, ka, mambo. Poa. Habari yako. Nzuri sana. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Sande sana. Uh, when I say asande sana, I mean thank you. Karibu sana, I mean welcome. When welcome. you say habari yako. Then now we have also traditional dance. These Maasai do play traditional dance. Every tribe in Tanzania have got their own traditional dances. Uh, one Maasai can jump up almost one meter high, jumping upward, and uh, that is a very, a very, very powerful skill. They they play there. They can wear things around their necks, around their heads. They dance. This is the, during the their entertainment time. Uh, here we have different types of foods. Uh, the staple food of Tanzania is yogurt, and I can also add the rice. Yogurt is made of corn, maize corn, and it is a Tanzanian traditional food which you simply cannot miss. Uh, if someone eats any, maybe takes any meal, uh, most of, most of the most. Uh, many Tanzanians will not feel comfortable if they miss yugal. We call yugal. The other foods are pilau. This is made of uh, rice. Chapati, that's made of wheat. Chips, chips mayai, that is uh, egg chicken, ch chips. Uh, we call mishkaki. Mishkaki, nyama choma, roasted meat. They cut meat in small pieces and they put it in one thing, and then it, they call it mishkaki. And this nyama, this nyama we call, uh, these are bananas mixed with the, with the, with the, with the, with the meat. So you can't eat rice alone, you can't eat yugali alone, you mix with the other things, like fish, vegetables, uh, beans, and the other things. Uh, okay, thank now, you so much, Mr. Everest Nziku. So I don't know if you are ready, to, you want to sing too? <laughs> or oh, I should sing for them to welcome them to Tanzania? Ah, uh, <laughs> hey, we can see Jambo, Nabari Gani, Jambo Kwako, Nina Kupenda. Welcome to yes. Tanzania. Welcome, everybody, <laughs> to Tanzania. Thank you. Okay, so I'll take over from here. So this song yes. is, is very special. Sorry, Mr. Everest, can you mute your microphone? Uh, yes. Okay, so this song is very special song for foreigners. Every foreigner who comes to Tanzania or Kenya, we, we local people usually sing this song for them with smiles and happy faces to wish them to come back to Tanzania because we have a lot of things to share, a lot of things to show you. This is why we want to welcome you 
Taiwanese to Tanzania. So I'll sing a little bit this song. Jambo, Jambo Bwana, Habari, Habari Gani, Nzuri, Nzuri Sana, Wageni, Wakaribishwa, Tanzania Yetu, Hakuna Matata. So Hakuna Matata means no problem. Tanzanians believe there is always no problem. So if you come to Tanzania, there will be no pressure to work like really fast. In Tanzania, everything is slow, slow, slow. So we call it pole pole, it means slow, slow. And Hakuna Matata means no problem. I think most of you have watched The Lion King and the, the, this saying of Hakuna Matata means no problem. So welcome to Tanzania, Hakuna Matata. Okay, let's move to our next session, which is sustainable development. Uh, as I have been introduced that I'm a student who is taking sustainable development. Sustainable development is a very important thing in our current world, but also in the future world. Why? It's because we want to make, we want to utilize the resources uh, in a sustainable way so that even the future generation will have access to natural resources, but also access to economic resources as well. So I have dedicated into these two uh, sustainable development goals, which is gender equality, this is goal number five, and goal number six, which is clean water and sanitation. So why do we speak about gender equality? Gender equality is because women are underrepresented women doesn't get equal chances as men in many communities. It is not only in Africa or not only in Tanzania, it's around the world. Women still are going through uh, stereotypes, they're going through discrimination, they're going through a lot of sexual abuse. So this is why I decided to, to speak more about women empowerment. But now we cannot just empower women and leave behind men. So we are trying to, to, to equally or balanced uh, empower these two genders, empower men at the same time, empower women so that we can have a better future. So don't always empower women and leave behind men or don't empower men and leave behind women. Let's empower them together to have a, a better future. But also clean water and sanitation. This is very important, especially in the places where there is climatic crisis where there is drought and famine, where there is no enough rain. Uh, for instance, women who are going through menstruation, if they are not going through uh, a better sanitation practice, they might get diseases. So this is why we want to emphasize more about clean water, not only to women, but also to, to kids and elders and youth to intake clean water for their health, but also sanitation to be able to get a uh, menstrual surprise during their menstruations. Um, in Tanzania, it is very sad, not only in Tanzania, actually, in East Africa. It is very sad that a lot of women during menstruation, they do not have access to sanitary pads or sanitary materials. And they, they end up staying at home, not going to work or not going to school just because they don't have uh, the reusable part or the disposable part to wear. So um, there's a fact that 65% of women and girls in Kenya cannot afford sanitary pads. And this thing is alarming, it's going real high. And sanit I mean, menstruation is a natural thing, is a biological thing, it's so natural. So if it is natural, this means everybody has a right to get their sanitary products. And uh, it's very crucial to maintain hygiene and preventing infection during menstruation. This is why we are talking about sanitary, sanitary, uh, sanitary pads or this goal number six, which is, which is clean water and sanitation. As you can see here from the picture, I was trying to educate uh, a, a girl 
who didn't know a lot about menstruation. I was asking, like, do you know the menstrual cycle? I remember this girl couldn't answer me because they are not getting a lot of education from the schools. They're not getting a, a, um, enough knowledge on how to maintain their menstruation. So this is why I was trying to educate these girls wherever I go to tell them that they should be well, uh, well managed during their menstruation to avoid diseases, to avoid discrimination, and also to keep on with their daily activities. The problem statement of this program is 50% 50, 50 of girls in East Africa, this, this means including Tanzania, including Kenya, including Uganda, Burundi, Congo, they are going through menstrual poverty. They go through period poverty. They don't have access to sanitary pads through their entire period. And uh, what are they using instead? If these girls doesn't have the sanitary pads, what are they using? From the research I have done and from the news I have heard, lady, I mean, girls will be wearing a pad for a longer time. If they get a chance to, to buy a, a disposable pad, instead of using it for, five, for four hours, they might use it for six to eight hours because they don't have any alternative. So this can cause diseases, but also they might use clothes. They can take just a normal piece of clothes and cut it to make a pad. But also some tribes, they use leaves. Yes, leaves, leaves from the trees. They believe if they use leaves, it can stop the blood from moving. But also another tribe, this tribe I was so shocked. It is in the Northern part of Tanzania. It's called Sukuma tribe in Mwanza. They use cow dungs. Can you imagine using the cow dung to protect yourself from menstrual period? And they believe if they use that thing, it will stop their menstrual period. But now I have a question to every one of you. What should they use? What should they use? What do you think will be a better solution to them? Okay, so me and my program, we decided to start making the reusable sanitary pad. As you can see from the picture here, we are trying to teach them how to make their own reusable sanitary pad by using their own hands. If they don't have money to buy the sanitary pad, that is totally fine. They can use their own local fabrics, their own normal fabrics to make their own reusable pads. And it's my wish that one day we make many reusable sanitary pads and ship them to Africa or ship them to any other place in the world, if it's South America or Eastern Asia, because all these places women still need support. And what are the possible solutions? Me, Benika, I have tried to, to create some solution towards this problem. And my response toward this problem was opening a non-government organization. So I have registered my own organization. It is called FIPOTEO. And FIPOTEO means fight poverty in Tanzania through empowering women. So it's my own organization and it's operating right now in Tanzania, trying to educate women more and more. Because we believe that education is the key of life. Education can, can rebellate people can make them get their basic needs if they are educated. But if they are not well educated, menstrual poverty will always be a problem in Africa. But stopping this pro problem is trying to educate them with finances, educate them with skills, educate them with many things so that they can be able to get their own sanitary pads by themselves, not always waiting for donations. So. Fipoteo, or I can say my organization, we are much focused on trying to educate and liberate people's mindsets. But also we have created different campaigns and projects that are not under my organization, that are under the Jane Goodall Roots and Shoots uh, organization, but also CJCU, Chang Long Dash, my school, but also the USR program. So we have created different campaigns and different projects. This is why last year I went back home because the school donated some money to me so that I can go and educate the girls in Tanzania, but also in Uganda. 
but also I have written a book, not myself. We have just, we're a group of ladies. We have together wrote a book, but I'm the main editor. The book is called Care Book. So the Care Book is a book with a lot of stories and a lot of advices, a lot of testimonies that are written to empower the lady that will read it. So our aim is to make this book available to every young girl who can read because it has different and amazing and interesting stories about other ladies who are menstruating. So if a lady sees that book, they'll be, oh, they'll be so surprised to see that, okay, there's another lady who is in Taiwan who went through the same thing because we cannot be stopped by menstruation. A lady cannot be stopped by menstruation. Menstruation is a natural thing. So it shouldn't stop somebody from achieving their own dreams. Imagine today you cannot go to school to learn or to study just because you are menstruating. It's not a good thing. So in the book, we have put together a lot of advices and a lot of tips on, what, on how a girl can, can overcome this period poverty. So this is what we have done so far. I believe you also have some possible solutions that you would like to share with me today and I'll, I'll note them down so that we can work together in empowering women towards um, menstrual poverty. Yes, but another thing is Tanzania is a big country, is a very big country with a lot of resources, a lot of natural resources. But, and the population is 63 million. And every day, every day, more, more, more kids are born, which is making it even harder for the government to, to divide the resources equally. So also we have uh, decided to speak about sexual reproductive health so that we could minimize the number of children in Tanzania because of ending poverty at the same time. Because even in Tanzania, you will see a girl who is like 12 years old, 13 years old, is having babies. You understand? From, yes, from 12, 13, 14, 15 people in my country, they have babies. Two, three kids in the rural areas is even more worse. So we are trying to also talk about sexual reproductive health so that we could help minimize poverty at the same time, help educating them on how they can use the family planning methods to, to elaborate poverty or population growth. Because if the population is too huge, we'll not be able to end poverty because the resources will be so little. Yeah, so this is what we are trying to discuss. I have a question to you. What do you think are the possible solutions towards ending period poverty? What are the possible solutions towards ending period poverty. Do you think it is possible to end period poverty? This is my question to you. Do you think it is possible to end period poverty? Or do you think it's, it's, uh, it's possible to attain gender equality? Is it possible for us to have clean water and sanitation? Because these sustainable goals, they, 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 they must end in, 30, in 2030. 2030. So by 2030, do you think we can have gender equality in the world? Or do you think we'll be able to access clean water and sanitation? I have a question to you. Anybody can just type. You can type and write in the comment section. Also, Mr. Everest Nziku, I can welcome you to add something if you have about poverty, period poverty, and clean water and sanitation. Because also period poverty is a gendered topic, is a gendered topic. Men are not so free to talk about period. Am I right, Mr. Everest? <laughs> uh, you are right. You are right. I think uh, to end the problem of gender uh, poverty, we should learn from people like Benika and the other people who are dealing with these such things. Uh, so our mind should be focused on solving problems of the majority who, does, who don't have enough education to master their own lives. So I think education is the key to life. 
uh, education can be a key to solve any problem our young people face, like those who live in Africa, Tanzania being one of them, and there's some people who live also in Taiwan, the other places of the world. It is possible also to solve the problem of uh, water because we students can be teachers to those who don't have. So in, in Tanzania, the problem of poverty is caused by the parents having not attended any school. So yes. if we teach parents, if we teach parents, we also teach the world, we teach the country, we teach the whole nation. Yes. Yeah, so, but the key also should be, be held by the students who are learning. It should include this, uh, this word, this, this issue to, in, the, in, the, in the syllabus where we are learning these things. Students should be teachers also. When you understand, when you get to know something, you should become a teacher also to teach others. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, what, what can you also talk about? Yeah. What can you mm -hmm. comment on the issue of gender, like on the issue of women versus men in the in Tanzanian mm -hmm. community? Are they equally empowered or not equally empowered? Women and men, do they have equal chances in Tanzania? They don't have equal chances. We have what we call uh, this one, male. The male are more powerful. They are yes. powerful in their heads. They are not powerful in their in their what in their discipline, because they have this that they inherited from their parents. Their parents were were bullying their wives and their their, their children. They are bullying them. And now they keep on bullying because also they don't have enough education to 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 eradicate this problem, this this issue of of gender issue. So I, still, I go back to the country, the, the the governments, the governments where we are talking about the government of Tanzania and the government of any country. They should also include uh, lessons, lessons or subjects dealing with the gender issue that uh, uh, these children who are in schools now should know this so that we get to change the whole world. I think the problem is also in the schools. We don't have enough education to, to, to revolutionize the, the generation. The generation needs to be revolutionized. So revolution, the, the strongest thing to deal with the, revol the revolution is education. It can't come from nowhere. Uh, it comes when someone learns. So those are my thoughts. We have a lot, but I think some of them are those. Education is very important. They do so because they lack enough education. They don't know the danger. I know that I, I've seen people, men beating their wives in, in, in the presence of their kids. They beat them up. And uh, also when they beat them, also the children learn that when they get, they marry or they get married, they should be beating their wives. And in Tanzania, we have a, cant a, a place called Mwansa, it's the region, it's, a, it's an, a big area. This is infested by these people called the Wasukuma. The Sukuma tribe, they know that if uh, a wife is not beaten by a husband, they regard it as uh, so if they are rejected if a husband beats the wife the wife knows that this love this man loves me it's a very bad bad, bad notion they don't have, they don't know the problem is not known lack of education lack of knowledge okay thank you so much and there is a comment here somebody has just said it is important to empower both women and men. Also, she believes in uh, investing in education. Yeah, so, okay, so the class will end in five minutes from now. And then I would like to wrap up this session by saying, Asante Sana. Uh, I hope you all remember uh, what Asante Sana is. <laughs> thank you Asante so much. Sana, Thank you so much, yes.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Danica and uh, your father. You do uh, introduce us about Tanzania, and uh, we know more about the diversity of wildlife and uh, the traditional food and the customs. And we also, uh, I was really impressed about Danica's devo uh, devotion. Uh, what you have done remind me that every effort counts, no, uh, no matter how small it is. And it also remind me that why I'm here to be a teacher. I think I should do more about education. Okay, thank you for you and your father. Okay. Thank uh, you so you much. See you next week and bye bye. Bye. And I type a move, type a move, and we the young person bye bye. Bye bye. Ha, ha, ha.